making a Stuart model steam plant part 67, piping the main water feed from the preheater to the hand pump and testing the system, fitting the Stuart 10V and the Stuart S50 in place on the baseboard. The piping between the water tank and the preheater inside the condenser uses quite a few variations of fittings. This, for instance, on the water tank, is 5 sixteenths of an inch by 32 threads per inch. But the union cone is designed for 5 32nd pipe. Moving to the other end of the baseboard, on the extreme right are the two fittings for the preheater in the condenser, and these are 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. And normally 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch union nuts are designed for union cones to accept 3 sixteenths pipe. I have a selection of union cone adapters. I buy these from Blackgates Engineering and they are incredibly useful. They allow you to use a 5 sixteenths by 32 union nut on 5 30 seconds or 4 mm pipe. They are also available in other sizes, for instance quarter inch down to 3 sixteenths and 532 down to 1 8th. I always have a good selection of these in my workshop because I do use them frequently. In this clip I'm tightening the union nut to the first of the preheater connectors. Where possible I always try to use my Barco spanner because the jaws are very wide and do not mark the brass at all. This is the water tank and I hadn't fastened it down to the baseboard properly and the pressure of the spanner moved it out of place. Definitely a good time to fit a more secure fixing. This is a 4BA slot head machine screw and it's called a cheese head machine screw because it looks like a cheese, allegedly. These by the way will not be the final fixings. The physical size of the water piping is governed by this. The outlets of the pump are quarter by 32 threads per inch and these are suitable for 1 8th or 5 32nd pipe. I've silver soldered the top pipe as you can see, the bottom part is loosely fitted together and I'm removing it and here it is ready to be silver soldered. I took it into the outer part of the workshop and silver soldered union cones at each end, being very careful not to get the union nuts mixed up. This union nut complete with the pipe adapter is for the condenser's preheater end. I always bend copper pipe completely by eye and I didn't get this one right as you can see the long bit is too long. Here's take two, I shortened the pipe slightly and soldered another union cone on the end. If you're not sure how to bend piping, either do it like I do, wrong, or you could use some thick plumber's solder wire, or even a bit of gardening wire to get the lengths right first. I got it right on the second attempt, and here I'm tightening the union nut onto the pump. In this instance I can't use my Barco spanner, it's physically too big. Both of these pipe runs need a very small amount of adjustment, but I'll do that at a later stage, just before I dismantle everything, to paint the parts and finish the baseboard. Try to contain your excitement, I'm going to test the system. You may be wondering why I'm using a bottle of spring water. I drink a lot of this spring water and when I'm in the workshop I usually have a bottle just off camera. Here I'm testing the pump and I'm really pleased with its performance. There is no ball rattle at all. One common problem with water pumps is as you move the handle, particularly at this speed, the ball valves rattle, but with this pump that's not happening, and all of the water is going very quickly into the boiler. I tip the rest of this bottle of spring water into the reservoir, and now the video is running at high speed, and soon the water reservoir was empty. The influx of the water into the boiler pressurised it slightly, nearly enough to blow the whistle. I mentioned this before in a previous episode, this is a whistle from PM Research, and I do like this. They look good and they're not too high pitched. The next part of the job is to screw down the mounting base for the Stuart 10V. It's held to the baseboard using four substantial wood screws, then the engine is bolted to the mounting plinth using some 4BA machine screws, long ones. Because this is only a temporary installation, I'm just using any slot screws that I could find in my box of 4BA bolts. I bolted down the S50 and I rotated the flywheel, I'm not just doing this for fun, I'm just making sure that the bed of the engine is not being distorted once it's bolted to a flat surface. 
Even though the base of the engine is substantial, it is possible to distort it when you bolt it securely in place. This one is OK. Because the Stuart Double Ten V is quite close to the condenser, my original plan was to pipe from the exhaust outlet directly into the condenser, but when I thought about it, I realised this was not a good idea. And I will be going into much greater detail about this in the next episode. But that is it for this one. I'd like to say, as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.